Hey Pete, GCI Turf. Just want to show you a good example of something. When we're talking about the landscape, grass may not always be the answer. So there are areas that uh, it's just very hard to get fescue to grow. And this is one of them. We've been fighting this spot for I don't know how long. Can't tell you how long we've been fighting. I've been doing this yard for 10 or 12, 13, 14 years. And this area stays like this. Of course, we seed it. It comes in fairly well. This isn't irrigated. It doesn't get any water uh, from irrigation. So, And he doesn't water it. So it depends strictly on rain. And of course it rains sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Well, uh, when it does rain, it comes in, but then it dries right back out when it gets dry. We're fighting tree roots here. Uh, we're also tr uh, treating heavy shade. And uh, we've, we've tried recommended cutting the limbs back, but he didn't want to do that. He wants to keep the more natural look. So a good alternative are these. Or mulch or some type of natural area so what we do is we have a redefiner the steel i mean excuse me the echo redefiner you can see i've cut my groove in here like so to kind of give the bed a shape and what we do is then we take roundup we spray out this area and while the guys are doing the other pine needles we will allow this to dry and then we will come back and uh put the needles in, put a very good heavy coat to cover up the dirt completely. And then we'll take our, our, our straight edge tool, our tamp, and we'll tamp the edge along here to give it a good, real good, nice, neat, defined uh, look. And uh, when we do things like this, I assign one guy to this job so that I know who's walking on this because I know that someone's gonna ask, well, what if you step on this and then walk over here? Well, you're right. If, if this roundup was wet and you step on it and it gets on the bottom of your boot and then you step here, you're gonna leave a dead footprint right there. So um, uh, the guy that's in charge of this, he will begin in this corner and start throwing his needles heavily and he will walk on the pine needles as he's throwing them and as he moves down that way we protect the bottom of our boot from the roundup. So uh, uh, they're gonna get on this and I'll show you the finished product. All right, so you can see we're having trouble growing turf, tall fescue under this shaded area and we're fighting tree roots. There's tree roots everywhere through here. So what we've done is we have changed the entire aesthetics of this, this area simply by not fighting the grass, not trying to battle and make the turf grow in an area that it's not comfortable growing in or an area that it just cannot grow in. Remember, photosynthesis has to take place in order for the turf to grow. So, we compromised here, the homeowner compromised. And I don't know what you think, but I just think it made this area look a hundred thousand times better. So don't get caught up sometimes in trying to grow turf in every single last crack and corner of the yard. You have many options. This, this guy likes the pine needle look. These are uh, uh, South Carolina longleaf pines, uh, nice red color. Um, they last a, a really good while. We put on a good thick layer down, but that's not your only option. You got mulch, different types of mulch, double ground, dyed mulch. You have uh, uh, river rock, pebble stone, uh, colored mulch. The options are endless to decorate this because in, in my opinion, you, you, you know I'm all about turf grass. You know I love love a nice healthy thick stand of fescue but at the end of the day 
I'm not trying to create a fescue property here. I'm trying to create a beautiful property here. And sometimes that means some compromise where you can't grow turf. You, you, you do something else to beautify the area, to make the area look good. And that's what we've done in this situation. I think it worked out pretty good. Like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Check you later.